lot of campers new to RVing. And we've had a lot of questions, uh, people inquiring about setup and takedown. So we thought we'd share today our routine. And that's exactly what it is. Yeah. It's a routine. That's the most important thing. You need to make it a routine. You want to do the same thing every time. So Cheryl has her jobs. I do the inside on the most part. Yeah. And I have my job. I do most of the outside stuff. We stay out of each other's way. Right. And that way there's no miscommunication. Mm -hmm. We don't have it where I thought she did something and she thought I did something. Mm -hmm. No, we always have a routine and we do our own jobs. Mm -hmm. That way we don't miss any steps and we are very efficient at setup and takedown. So if you're starting out, it's always a good idea to have probably a, a list, a printed list. Yeah. So then you can just kind of go through and check, check, check. So you're and, bound to forget something when you're first starting out. And that list is going to be different for everybody. It depends mm -hmm. on what type of RV you have and, and the setup that you have. But we're going to show you what we do mm -hmm. and what we found is uh, most effective. Some of the things are important that you do actually want to get right, such as putting the chocks down is yep. before you unhook your, uh, your safety, trailer. Safety first. Yeah. But uh, let's get into it. Okay. Let's do it. For back in sight, drive past your sight and stop. Both get out and determine the best position for the trailer. Look for a spot that is relatively even for the side to side of your trailer. Mark where you want your trailer wheels to be. Determine what is the best angle to back into the site. You may have to drive around to pull in from the other side. If you have a separate sway controller, now's the time to remove it. Don't back in with a sway controller attached as it could cause damage to your trailer. We don't have a sway controller on ours, above. so we don't have to worry about that. I prefer backing in, turning into the driver's yeah, side, the because then I can easily see where the driver's side of the trailer is, as it's usually the closest to the edge of the site. Have a driver and a spotter. Ben's the driver, I'm the spotter. The driver has to trust the spotter and do what the spotter says. If we have self-service, I call Ben and he answers on the vehicle's Bluetooth stereo system so that he can talk and listen hands-free. If we don't have cell service, we use walk talk. If they're dead, then we do it the old-fashioned way and yell out to each other. That always grabs the attention of neighbors who may want to come over and offer their opinions. When backing in, I direct Ben to say where I want the back end of the trailer to go. I'll say either driver's side or passenger side, which is much easier than right and left or this way and that way. I watch the back end and the passenger side, and Ben watches the driver's side and front end. This is not the time to use the trailer backup assist that comes with Ford pickup trucks, as it'll move your front end all over the place and you don't have the space to do that. When you think you're in the right spot, check the side to side with a level. Ours is mounted on the front of the trailer. If it's not level, sometimes you just need to move up or back a foot or two to get it level. If you need to raise one side, then either put a board under it and back up or pull forward onto it or use Camco level levelers if on firm ground, like gravel, hard pack ground, concrete, or asphalt. When you're satisfied with your position, put on the parking brake of the truck and get out. The absolute first thing to do at this point is to chalk the tires. Ensure you chalk the tires so that they can't move forward or backward, no matter what angle the trailer's at. Having the chocks tight to the wheels also helps the stabilization of the trailer and helps with the movement when you're walking around in the trailer. You're then safe to start unhooking the trailer. Unhook the trailer brake safety and safety chains. I leave the power plugged into the truck until we have the trailer hooked up to electricity just to give the trailer battery some extra help when using the tongue jack. Raise the jack up partially raising the truck in order to easily unhook the weight distribution hitch spring bars. If you don't raise it up high enough, the pressure on the spring bars will be very strong and it will be difficult or dangerous to unhook them. Remove the spring bars, then lower the tongue jack until you see the ball settling in the hitch socket. Then unlatch the hitch. Raise the tongue jack above the ball of the hitch so that you can clear it when pulling away. Unhook the power from the truck and make sure everything between the truck and trailer is disconnected. Move the truck away from the trailer. At this point, I usually plug the trailer into electricity. We use a surge protector to protect our electrical system from surges. Turn off the breaker to the outlet and plug the surge protector into it and then turn on the breaker. Check the lights on the surge protector to ensure the outlet is working properly. If it's working properly, you can then plug your power cord into the surge protector. We have a lock that we use to secure our surge protector to the electrical pedestal to prevent theft. 
We then level our trailer from front to back with the use of a small level on a horizontal line of the trailer. I raise or lower the tongue jack until it's level. If anything, I prefer the front to be a little higher than the back so that our heads are higher than our feet when sleeping and not the other way around. Once level, I get the wooden boards out that I used to put under the stabilizer jacks. I lower each stabilizer jack so that it's snug. These jacks are not designed to lift the trailer up or to level the trailer. They are just to stabilize the trailer, making it less wobbly when getting in and out and walking around inside. Now is a good time to remove the bikes from the bike rack as Cheryl goes into the trailer to prepare to open the slide out. Ben stands outside where the slide out comes out to make sure there's nothing in the way of it opening. I press the button to open it and watch inside to ensure it doesn't catch on anything while Ben watches the outside. When the slide out is open, there's usually some extra settling of the trailer. The slide out side will sink lower. I then firm up the stabilizing jacks on the opposite side as they're usually loose at this point. Cheryl now starts her process inside the trailer, while at the same time, I continue mine outside. I turn the fridge on as we always have it turned off while traveling. We don't want an open propane line in flame when traveling down the road and especially when at a gas station. I get the mats out and check the area that they're going for things like rocks, sticks, holes, or a big pile of leaves and clean it up. I then put the mats down. I like to get out the solar lamps and put them in the sun to start charging up so they're ready for when it gets dark. I then open up the awning. Take it slow, ensuring both arms are opening evenly. I turn on the pump and the water heater and start setting things up for our stay. Scan TV channels, add water to the ice maker and turn it on while doing all of that. I then start unloading the truck. I take the auto cooler and set it up in a dry spot under the awning. I take out Jax's bed and the ladder. I use the ladder to look on top of the slide out before closing it up during takedown. I keep the ladder under the slide out. I get the small tables and chairs out and set them up. We like a small table at each door and a couple by the chairs at the campfire. We usually set up four chairs, even when there's only two of us, just so that we have chairs for company that drops by. I grab the water jug and fill it up with park water. I place it on the end of the picnic table bench with a bucket under it. We use it for washing hands and rinsing out things like the coffee grounds from our French press. We dump the used water in the vault toilet. I then set up our solar lights. Cheryl likes a lot of nice dim lights. It is a very low level of light at the campsite at night that won't bother anybody. I'll take the bins out of the driver's side compartment of the trailer. We keep the tablecloth, drink holders, candles, things like that in there, and I set them up. We like using chair pads, which are actually usually marketed as ice fishing cushions in our chairs, and then on the picnic table benches. They provide cushioning and warmth. Then we're all set. Time to grab some ice, pour a drink, and admire our work. That's a good setup. So that's how you set up at a campsite. And now let's look at how you take down. I clean the trailer, getting it ready for the next trip while Ben goes outside to start the outside process of putting stuff away. After doing the dishes, I dump the dishwater in the toilet. Adding more liquid helps when dumping the black tank at the dump station. I then clean the toilet and the rest of the bathroom, including the sink and shower. I take down items that will move or fall when traveling. That includes a lot of our decorations and items on the kitchen counter and table. I take the coats off the hook because they'll fall off anyway and I put them on the dinette seat. I put most of the things on the couch where they stay put. I make sure to remove anything that may interfere with the closing of the slide out. I clean the kitchen sink. While I'm doing all this, Ben is outside doing his thing. I start by taking the ice maker outside and draining it, then putting it back in where it stays for travel. I then take down all the outdoor gear, all the solar lights, the garbage, recycling and returnables, our sign, all the candles and things on the picnic table, tablecloth. I put everything in their respective bins to go back into the front storage bin of the trailer or into the back of the truck. We then move the picnic table off of the mat and flip the mat over onto the picnic table to dry the underside of it. I then sweep it off when dry. I check the slide out roof for any debris and remove anything. I sometimes use a telescopic broom for that, 
but lately I've been using a leaf blower. We then bring the slide out in. Cheryl is inside pressing the button and ensuring nothing is interfering with the slide out coming in and I'm outside making sure nothing is interfering with it and making sure it's all running smoothly. We then bring the awning in. I do it bits at a time, looking for debris stuck to it and I sweep it off. I do a final interior check to make sure everything is secure. I turn off the fridge, pump and hot water tank. I check cupboard doors and drawers to make sure they're all secure. Ben folds up the mat, I clean off the picnic table. I then load the bikes on the bike rack. I then bring up the stabilization jacks. I load up the last of the stuff in the truck and the bins in the trailer. I raise the stairs while Ben starts hooking up the truck. I hook up the truck to the trailer. Once I have everything but the spring bars hooked up, I raise the tongue jack which partially lifts the back end of the truck so that I can attach the chains from the spring bars to the lift bracket and crank it on easily. I can then lower it back down and raise the tongue jack. We then unplug the electrical at the pedestal by first flipping the breaker off and then unplugging the cord. We lock our cord to the pedestal so we have to unlock it then. As we roll up the cords, we wipe them down with a rag to dry them and clean them before storing them in the rear compartment of the trailer. Now we can remove all the wheel chocks because we are completely hooked up to the truck. If we are parked on levelers or blocks, I'll pull ahead to get off of them and Cheryl will pick them up and put them in the front storage area of the trailer with the wheel chocks. I check the tire pressure. We have a TPMS, which is a tire pressure monitoring system. Our tires are supposed to be at 50 PSI. If they're around 48 to 50, I'm good with that. Before I had a TPMS, I would use a digital tire pressure gauge and check them all. I often torque the lug nuts to the correct foot pounds while doing that to ensure none have loosened. On this trailer, they're supposed to be at 100 foot pounds. I go to the back of the trailer and check the lights. Brake lights, turn signals, and hazard lights. We both do a circle check around the entire trailer, making sure everything is secure and okay with the trailer and the hookup. We look around the campsite to make sure we didn't leave anything behind. Then we're all set. Time to pull out. We've shown you how we set up and take down. Now I have the camping gear list in Cheryl fashion, of course. Um, this isn't gonna be everybody's list, but it's a good starting point for those of you who forget things or um, aren't familiar with what to bring camping. I've done a pretty detailed list of everything in the trailer and outside of the trailer that we bring. There will also be links to some of these because I don't wanna go into detail, like such as the first aid kits and that sort of thing. Um, the camping gear list is, it's in Excel spreadsheets, so you can alter it to delete or add whatever you need. We start with the pantry items, fridge and freezer, dry goods, the cupboard, the bathroom, clothing, bedding, outdoor and beach items, things to bring for your dog, and of course miscellaneous. So all these things you will be able to find on our website, which is campingwithcoles.ca, and it will be under the heading DIY, do it yourself, not DIY, but DIY. Um, obviously this isn't gonna be for tent campers, but you can get a good, good amount of stuff from these lists. When we used to tent camp, uh, I would have Rubbermaid bins and I would laminate my lists and stick them on the inside lid of the Rubbermaid bin. That way I always knew what I had to take and they would everything would stay dry. But um, now that we have a camper, our list has gotten a little bit bigger. <laughs> so I hope this list helps. If anybody has any questions or comments, just put it in the comments below. So there you have it. That's it for setting up and taking out, taking down at a campsite. Uh, just get into a routine and each person has their own job to do. It should run fairly smoothly. <laughs> right, Jax? <clears throat> smoothly like that. That's right. But start off with a list so that you don't forget anything. And after a while, it'll just be second nature. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.